Okay. All right. So uh, those of you that are on the call, um, thank you for getting on. My name is Kristen Williams with Dealer Pro. I am the dealer development manager here. I work in the home office, and then I also travel to some of our dealerships from our sales department. I've also got on the call some of our trainers. I've got Bill Horgan, who is one of our directors of training, and Carmen Shulo, who is one of our fixed ops specialists um, off the East Coast. So I think our goal today is to just kind of regroup and get together, and hopefully this will be a, a common time that we can get together over the next few weeks as, as things continue to rapidly change in our industry and state by state. And I thought we had a lot of insight to provide you because the kind of company that we are. Those of you that haven't worked with us maybe recently, we have, uh, I believe, 13 folks out in the field that cover the United States and Canada. And so we have gotten a lot of feedback from dealerships over these last couple of weeks, what they're doing, what they're not able to do, what they're getting from their customers. And so we thought we'd take some time to just discuss at some point. So you're welcome to unmute yourselves if you'd like to jump in at any time. This is a very kind of laid back forum. We don't know what you're looking to gain out of this necessarily. We hope that, you know, the content that we have today, I think, I know will be helpful. But also we want to we want to find out where where you are, because like I said, we know that things are different from state to state. And even within some states, they're different from county to county. So um, let's go ahead and, and get started into some of the content. And I found this quote, a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. And while we all know that, I think when there's bumps in the road, that makes for even greater and stronger leadership. And that's what we need right now is folks that are stepping up and being proactive and finding ways to um, you know, still connect with our customers as long as we can. And, um, and then let me say before we go any further, we realize that things are changing so rapidly. In fact, I know the state of Pennsylvania just as of late yesterday has asked all businesses to cease operating unless they are of an emergency uh, type uh, business. And so we might um, have some time to discuss that as well, see if anybody else is, is going that direction. So I realize this content is, is different for all of you and may or may not apply, but it's a great quote and um, we plan on sailing right through this and coming out better, better for it through the other side. Oh, okay. So if you've ever heard our CEO, Don Reed, speak, he covers this a lot in his, his talks. And I thought now was a good time to talk about comfort zone and just being successful in our departments with our employees and our customers. You know, it is a journey. It's, it's not a destination. So it requires us to always be evolving, always be changing, but more importantly, listening <coughs> and listen to your customers. What is it they need from you right now? That's really the best way to find out how you can address their needs, their concerns, and um, and do what's best for your company. So push yourself out of your comfort zone. You know, let's think outside the box on ways again that we can try to continue to offer some services to our customers, keep them coming into the store. Um, and if they're not going to come into the store, how else are we going to reach them? So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay, what's going on here? There we go. Okay, so um, I want to source this properly, and we're recording this, and then I'll email this out to you as well in case these are some websites you want to go to. I've got several throughout the presentation. The five C's of leading in adversity. I thought this was a really terrific um, article. Credibility, confidence, clarity, over-communication, and consistency. So growing as a fixed ops leader through times like this, and really this can apply at any time, with so many unknowns right now, though, what you as a manager need to remember is you do have control over certain things, both internally and externally. Internally, you have your employees. There are certain processes. We want to stick to those. You know, when some, sometimes you find people when, when things seem to be um, falling off around them a little bit, then they kind of don't see the value in the other processes that you were doing. And that's not true. If anything, we need to provide the stability and the consistency for your customers so that they feel secure and stable knowing that they're still getting the same level of customer service they've gotten before. So when you think about your employees as a leader, whether it's service manager, parts manager, service lane manager, you need to be the example. So on the right hand side, providing a positive, proactive outlook. I know we're at the point here as well as I am personally of, you know, I don't want to talk about it so much. So let's establish a new conversation in the service drive with your employees. 
let's be positive. Let's talk about what it's going to look like when we bust out of this. And everyone is, you know, needing to get uh, by those cars and get their cars serviced. We're going to be slammed at some point. Giving them the support they need by providing accurate sources of information that are not opinion or editorial based. Because things are changing so rapidly, everyone gets their information from different places. You want to be respectful of that. Give them information that's you know accurate and, and authoritatively based. In other words, from the CDC or from your state government. Instilling confidence by honestly answering their questions about the potential that this is going to have, the impact it's going to have on your business, their business, their paycheck, and the livelihood of their family. You don't have to disclose everything because we don't know. But you at least have to acknowledge it. And if you can't address it, tell them. I, I can't address it right now, but you know, let, we're, let's going to have a meeting. We're going to meet with the managers. We'll talk about this you know, on Wednesday. A clear understanding of how and what they should be communicating to your customers. So you want to make sure that they are also being positive. They're a place that your customers can come and maybe not rehash uh, some of the concerns that they have that they're seeing in the news every day. We all need a break from that. So what should your advisors, what should your cashier, your warranty clerk, your receptionist, what should all those folks that are answering the phone um, say? Is there something different that you want them saying? And communicating about new procedures, policies as they change, and ensuring that your employees know where to get new information from your company as it comes out. You may not have any kind of, you know, internet or anything, intranet for your company um, if you're, you know, a small dealer, but you certainly have email and you also have a copy machine and a printer. So print out some things in writing that they can say, maybe you maybe you can create a binder where they can go to, you know, here's now what we we have to do disinfecting wise. Here's here's what we have to start doing differently. So how to be an effective leader for your fixed ops employees, credibility. And this is really reflective of your competency as a leader. Again, being positive and proactive, but you also have to be compassionate. We don't want to just gloss over things. I mean, there's a reality to the situation. So remind your employees of the important purpose and the contribution that they have in your department, how important they are. Focus on the customer. We all do better when we have something outside of ourselves to focus on. I know I do. Um, it's my kids, you know, ensuring that your kids are safe, that they know the precautions they need to take. So give your employees something to focus on at work. And we'll talk about some other things they can do if their normal duties have kind of slowed down. Remind them that this is not forever, but it may be longer than expected. Again, some, everyone's got different levels of concern and, um, and maybe even anxiety about this. We all have stories, I'm sure, of friends, acquaintances, and family that are suffering, whether it's the job that they have, the job that they now don't have, um, a wedding got canceled, uh, elderly that they can't visit. Remind them how great they are and how thankful you are for their contribution at your dealership. Support that addresses their concern about their own health and safety and their loved ones. Again, don't editorialize or often your own opinions. Don't offer opinion pieces that you've read about or seen on the news. Give them specific places they can go to. So over here, here are the two, um, two of the CDC web pages that I personally thought were very helpful at the CDC website. There's a ton, a ton, a ton of information there. And um, one of these is particularly on family issues. There's also an area on anxiety and stress. Um, a lot of good information there. You don't have to know everything as a leader or a manager, but you do need to have an understanding of the situation. It reflects on, again, your competency and your credibility as a leader so that the next time something new comes out, you know, you need to have their trust. They need to know that you're making sound decisions on behalf of their job. <clears throat> now we talked about educational, authoritative, informational resources. Confidence, instilling confidence through your example as a leader. Genuine words, actions that show that issues can be resolved. It may not be the resolution we like at the moment. Um, it, it might not be the one that's uh, you know, bringing us in the money or the sales that we typically have, uh, but we need to work through these things and at least offer that there is a resolution. There's always a way to get where we wanna go. Ask your employees their thoughts and feelings. Don't fear what they might share. It's the silence that offers people to come up with their own imagination, right? When you don't acknowledge and you pretend you want to just gloss over things, that's when we all let our imagination get the best of us and we tend to go to the worst possible spot. Honesty about the business impact and their livelihood. And again, acknowledge their fears, even if you don't have a resolution at that moment. 
assure them that you will. You will come to some resolution. <clears throat> Clarity. And I, as I just mentioned, when there's ambiguity or nothing, there's no communication, there's no guidance or direction, and it's allowed to fester, people start talking and they assume the worst. Oh, we're going to be laying people off. Oh, technicians aren't busy. We're sending them home early. Acknowledge these things. Right now, you possibly, many of you, want to have daily meetings with your teams, at least a daily email uh, going out to them. And I would even say a face-to-face -face brief meeting, just pumping them up, reminding them of the positives, the things that we can control and do. Uncertainty breeds cloudy thinking and a lack of focus. Refocus your employees on the job at hand and give them direction. There are still many things we have to offer your customers and remind your customers of what they you know, can gain from still maintaining their vehicles. Set specific expectations for any new responsibilities or ways of doing things. And I'll tell you, meeting the CDC guidelines is at least you have to believe that perception is reality. These are important. They cannot cut corners when it comes to disinfecting, not sharing workstations with employees, not picking up the other advisor's phone, um, you know, to cover the phones. So review those, train them on how and remind them every day, you know, by the way, this is kind of how we're conducting business right now. Over communication. Um, I, I'm a communication major and I believe you can never communicate enough and often enough. So make it early. In other words, get out in front of your industry, your dealership, your department, your town. Be the leader. Be the ones that are sharing with your community and your employees and your customers what's happening. Listen to what's happening. Listen to your employees and notice listen are the first two bullet points and then communicate updates to your employees even if there is no update, give a no update update, just like when you're giving status updates to your customers. Sometimes you can't tell them a time, but they still want to know. It allows them to feel, again, trustworthy and secure, knowing that more information is here, and now at least my expectation is set. Make sure employees have somewhere that they can go to update, to get the updated information, which I mentioned earlier. So through emails, you can put updates on your office wall, you can put them in a break room, however you guys want to deliver that. And the last one um, in the five C's is consistency. So maintaining this level of communication, this level of concern and care and change and adaptability through these days, weeks, and possibly months. We just don't know. Consistency breeds confidence and security, and I would also say trust. And that goes for employees and customers. Keep company policies and processes in place that keep your team running smoothly and that give your customers the same level of service they're used to getting. We know things are changing. Everyone's well aware of that. But you know what? There's a part of us also that needs to keep on, keep on trucking. Give them, again, the same processes that your customers are used to, the same friendly smile, uh, not the handshake. And, um, but make sure your employees aren't sort of throwing out you know, the baby with the bathwater. Creating a proactive strategy that will build future stability and promote CSI. So right now, there's just no magic wand to make sure that, you know, we don't see a dip in our service traffic or our service sales, that we don't see a dip in showroom sales. I mean, it is uh, there, and I, I don't want to sound naive, but I don't also want to be completely negative here. So there are some things from a marketing standpoint that you can continue to do to stay front and center of your customers and, um, and help them. You know, this is dealer pros. Uh, effort. We want to still talk to our customers. We want to still know what they're doing, how we can help, and that we're here to help in any way that we can, and we'll adapt as well. Maybe we'll start offering, um, you know, free online training to advisors while uh, they've got maybe a little bit of downtime. So come up with ways that you can stay front and center with your customers. So with your customer, with your customers, this is huge proactive communication. And as dealerships, we find this industry, and I've, I've been in the industry, in and around the industry my whole life, and we are behind when it comes to technology. Uh, if you've worked in the healthcare fields, the financial fields, um, dealerships typically, we're, we're not up to speed as much on running YouTube videos, especially when it comes to the service department. You need to sharpen your skills in these areas right now. This is the only way you're going to be able to deliver to, your, to some of your customers in some of your markets. So get better at emailing consistently. Get your website updated. Um, start communicating over the phones if you can. If you know if you're all if you're fully staffed, um, and we'll talk about some more video content down below. So number one, do your customers even know you're open for business? I don't know. You may have already tackled this one. So great job. 
but I know I personally got an email from my automobile dealer here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I'm going to share an email sample with you here in a minute, but make sure your customers know, yes, we're open for business. Here are the services we're still offering. Um, so send it by personal email, update it on your website, and then um, who can make those outbound calls? Reminding customers, telling them how quickly they can get an oil change completed. Um, out offering new ways of helping them. And uh, Bill and Carmen, if you want to jump in uh, here at any point and expand on some of these, but offering pickup and delivery of their vehicles, you can utilize sales team members for this. You can utilize technicians possibly for this. And uh, Carmen and Bill, I know we have some stores that are doing this. Do you want to expand on any of those details? Uh, excuse me, uh, it's Carmen. Um, I know that uh, some stores are using uh, hourly technicians to pick up and deliver customer vehicles. Um, in the event that you're doing that, you obviously still want to track those hourly technicians, make them keep a log of what they're doing. Um, but making sure that your customers know that you'll you'll you know you're willing to come get their vehicle is huge um because there's a good chance that they're either still working or they're stuck at home um and so if you can come get their vehicle if you can come pick their vehicle up um, let them know that you'll be disinfecting it uh both before and after having somebody work on it those are those are big things uh right now that we're seeing happen and we've got some guidelines on how to disinfect after the technicians worked on their vehicle. Some other ways you can become their source for CDC and state updates on your website, regular emails to your customers, letting them know, especially if you're a dealership that is big in your community. If people you know, come to your store for events, um, you do a lot of community outreach with charities and things like that. You wanna, again, be that same voice of, of uh, sort of continuity within your, within your community, and especially if you're in a small town. So you can become their rather regular source of updates and sift through all the stuff we're all seeing and be that regular um, you know, communication provider for anything that's changing. So think about new ways to reach your customers through video. Some of you already do this, I'm sure. I know many dealerships have these out there, um, but YouTube, how-to videos, how to change your own oil, how to uh, read your maintenance schedule, what can you do at home? to maintain the performance of your vehicle. How best to wash and wax your car? Again, these are all ideas to keep you helpful in front of your customers um, and um, meeting them where they are, which like Carmen said, in some cases, they're stuck at home. There's a Loom video app. I don't know if any of you have used Loom. I've used Loom. I know several other folks that I interact with use this service and it's really fantastic. It's a video email message. So it's very simple to use. The app is right here. You, um, you log in, it's free, up to, a, you know, so many, but um, and you, me, instead of typing out whatever email you want to send to your customers, you record somebody saying it. You might convince your dealer to be that person, or maybe you as a fixed ops manager are that person, uh, but you're on video, and you can record, you know, two, three, five-minute video that your customers will get, especially now, those of us that are stuck at home, we're all very interactive on video, on internet, uh, content and so it's another way to deliver messages that is different and so this is the time to again sharpen up those skills that maybe you, you weren't so great at before so here's a sample email to your customers and I won't read it word for word but what it basically says is most importantly um, you know we care about the public health and public safety of everyone our employees and our customers we're following the guidelines set out by our state and nationally and we are open for business However, we want to assure you that you can trust that it will be a safe and, and risk-free environment. So here are some of the ways we're, we're working to um, you know, make sure that our dealership and our service department are clean. And so number six here says full disinfection of your vehicle instrument panel door handles after your service visit. And I'll show you that checklist here in a minute. And then um, here are some of the additional services they're offering. They're offering a key drop for service vehicles, home delivery for vehicle sales, and then sales and service reps are available by phone. All right, and you'll have this when I send it. So here is a checklist um, when we wanna build confidence and trust with your customers. And again, you may not think, you know, we've heard a lot, some people think that this is 
you know, overblown to a certain extent. I think everyone feels that way because we've never been in this position before. And uh, it's just it's just hard to believe. Um, but wherever somebody is on that spectrum of of uh, this, you know, this pandemic, um, you have to still build confidence and trust. Most people have a concern for their health and well-being. So the primary concern is making sure they understand you know that. Whatever changes, ensure your customers know that you'll provide the same great care and service for them and their vehicle. And remind them what you're doing to follow the CDC guidelines. So we know in our state it changed. Now we you need to remind people that you're taking employee temperatures, you're disinfecting workstations, dealership door handles, and I would be specific about these things. Um, how detailed you're being. Dealership door handles, desks, customer waiting area, hand sanitizer locations throughout. In the service department, you can require your technicians to wear gloves. I do know in some stores, these have to be certain types of gloves so they don't disintegrate with some of the uh, oils and products that they're working with. So um, I don't know if anybody's got any, any insight that they wanna share. And then disinfecting of the customer vehicle before delivering it back to them. So here is a checklist of what you need to train your folks on. You can have a greeter, a porter, or a tech doing this. Exterior and interior door handles, the gear shift, the instrument panel, including all radio buttons, um, the hood and rear door release and latch. So in other words, the, the buttons inside the vehicle, but then also uh, go back and, and uh, you know, wipe the hood and wipe the rear, the rear uh, entry if hands have been on it and making sure that everyone's trained to do that every time. This is a, a good source right here, guidance on preparing workplaces. Um, and it's at OSHA.gov, and um, you might find that to be helpful as well. All right, so uh, lastly, with regard to your customer, so community, and I touched on this earlier, if you already have a prominent place in your own community, continue to be that, that company. Provide messaging as a public service. Provide webinars. Maybe you do some customer outreach. Maybe you do something like we're doing, and you know, walk them through what are some things they can be doing at home to maintain their vehicles. Why is it important for them to get their vehicle in and get it serviced to avoid costly mechanical repairs later on? And then giving CDC updates. So what should you be focusing on right now as things are changing, um, maybe as customers are continuing to come in or maybe they're not coming in as much, staying focused on fixed stops in the service lane with your advisors, continue to maintain effective walk-arounds and menu presentations. Now it's even more important to establish a rapport and build trust with your customers. And everybody, I think there's a sense of camaraderie, a little bit of commiseration maybe, um, as long as you know, it's within reason, but you wanna touch base with your customers. And um, you know, everybody's being affected in different ways. Remind your customers of the importance of maintaining peak performance of their vehicle. We don't know how long we're in this for, uh, even more important to keep things operating smoothly, you know, everything at your house, your car, um, so that you can get going on that vacation that you might have postponed uh, later because you know what? The schedule is going to be jammed up in J June, July, August potentially. And so, uh, you know, Mr. Customer, we'd really like to get your vehicle in, you know, peak performance right now uh, if we can. Cost savings of maintenance versus costly repairs. Train on word tracks that address the new steps that you're taking. I think you do want to include this as a value-added service to your customers when you're setting appointments and when they're coming in the service drive. Remind them again of all the steps you're taking each day to disinfect and to make them uh, keep them safe and healthy. Outbound phone calls. If you've got advisors that aren't as busy, this is a great area to try to generate some additional business. Call those recall customers. I know I, for one, put this off oh, I'll get to the recall later. Those folks, you know, they're not driving their cars, you know, much. They're not needing to get to all the places that they typically do, kids to baseball practice, um, you know, to their workouts. I, I'm not working out. So get them, get their cars in. It's a prime time to have that car. They don't need it as much as they needed it before. Hours per RO should be going up as your advisors have more time to devote to your customers they should be able to have those longer conversations, particularly if your store was in the category of seeing 15 to 20 customers a day per advisor. That's a little on the heavy end. You want them to be seeing 10 to 12 to 15 customers a day, of course, depending on the type of franchise that you own or that you're in. So, so Kristen. Yes. 
I, I actually think one of the points you made, which is when it went it's slow, is one of the best times to really focus on training, whether that's technician training or advisor training. I, I would really put as much effort into that. Train them on the technical side of the automobile on things that they don't understand. Try to get them, you know, one of the common questions I ask advisors all the time is, why, why would the Medtronic scanner fail a battery but the vehicle start every time? And they can never answer the question, or very few can. So those are little things where you could say, obviously they've been selling batteries all along, so but they don't know why that's the case. So by training them, try and pick out little things and nuggets that you see in here that you think would improve them. Great, yep, and you'll see as we go through these slides, training is listed for each of your um, you know, groups of employees throughout service and parts. It's a great time to train, a great time for you as a service manager or parts manager to tackle the things that you always wish you had time for. So for your technicians, train on and ensure effective MPIs are being completed. Get caught up on internals if you're not already. Uh, offering pickup and delivery of vehicles if you want your technicians to be helping with that, if they've got time to do that. What are the online options for your technicians? Can they enroll in some online courses right now? Are they still being offered? Uh, pop on that computer and start doing some searches and, um, and get them the training that they need, especially for those hourly technicians that you've wanted to promote or hope to promote. Um, you know, get them some additional training, like Bill said. Clean up and organize the tool room, inventory analysis of tools and equipment. You can kind of apply a lot of the things that I'm applying to my house, right? <laughs> There's all kinds of projects that we put off that we could be completing now that will benefit us down the road and shop cleanup. If your shop doesn't look tip top, what can we do to make it look uh, better? So for managers, we do a repair order now. I, oh, go ahead. Can I throw one thing in there, Kristen? Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the one of the other things you guys could do, um, and we used to do this at a dealership that I used to work at, is we had a roadside tech, <clears throat> we had a roadside technician, and his primary job was to drive around um, to places in the neighborhood that people had called and wanted their vehicle repaired, you know, minor stuff. And he would go to their, to wherever they were, whether they were physically on the side of the road or if they were at their house in their driveway or at work. And he would run um, simple diagnostics and repairs right there on the spot. Uh, that's another thing that you could do. Absolutely. Okay, managers, conduct a repair order analysis. This is something that we do for our stores um, when we come out and do an entire uh, analysis. And so we always recommend that you do this. And uh, Bill and Carmen, what do you guys, when, you, when you're training in the stores, how often do you recommend service managers do a repair order analysis? And maybe you can talk a little bit about what that involves. I would try to do one daily, yeah, especially when it's slow because then you're looking at every lost opportunity and you, you can see where see, it let, lets you see trends and issues with particular advisors, with particular technicians. And, um, and it helps you, uh, and it helps, it lets them know that you're looking every day. If people know you're looking every day, they're going to respond differently to you. Go ahead, Carmen. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything to add to that. I would also say daily um, and it allows you to, kind of deep dive into it. If you make a make a list of all your technicians and all your advisors, um, you know, have mileage ranges on there, uh, whether or not there's multi-point inspections, the thoroughness of the multi-point inspections. I know a lot of us see a multi-point inspection, put a check in the box and say, yeah, they did it. But very often we see repair orders with vehicles with 120,000 miles on it, and there's no recommendations on that multi-point inspection, which tells us that they're not very thorough or accurate. They're kind of being pencil whipped, we call it. Okay. So for managers, hands-on training and coaching, working on scripts. This is something we don't find in a lot of the stores that we go in. Um, and so again, it's service managers, parts managers, you're busy, you're pulled in a lot of different directions. Now might be a good time that you'd be able to you know, get out there, and as Bill mentioned before, especially if you've got a green advisor that's not sharp on technical awareness, spending some time with them. Um, it's also another time to uh, maybe do some job shadowing. You know, so if you need somebody else to pick up slack in another department, what can they learn 
Um, you know, maybe you've got somebody that's going to need to cashier at some point. So that's another thing to think about. Polish your technician recruiting skills. Almost 90, what, 90 plus or more of the stores that we go in, everyone's looking for technicians. Most technicians are employed. So there's a gentleman by the name of Joe Henry, and he owns a company called Act Auto Staffing. And I've got his website right here. And he offers a terrific service. I'm not going to get into that. You can see it on his website. But he has technician recruiting tips of the month. And um, I forget how many videos he's up to now. He just added some more. And so now's the time. You have time to potentially look those up, watch those um, watch those recruiting tips. We all have to think outside the box when we recruit techs, and oftentimes we just don't have the time to investigate all the options or to recruit from an hour's radius within our zip code. And so he's got some really great ideas uh, on technician recruiting skills. So you can look at your parts. Don't forget military. Don't forget military military bases, military websites. Because the military will pay sometimes the first 90 days of someone's salary, and they call it a training expense. Okay, pricing matrix. Shop, shop your competitors now. This is another area that we come in, and everyone tells us they've got a pricing matrix. Well, when's the last time you shopped around in your town to see if you were competitive with the commonly shopped items that your customers are calling about? Now's the time that you can polish that up and, and sharpen that as well. And review compensation plans. Most of the stores we go in, wouldn't you say, Bill and Carmen, the majority, not the minority, right, are interested in better compensation plans? I yeah. agree with that. <clears throat> and, and, and compensation plans, the simpler they are, the more they motivate. And so the question our trainers always ask is, does it motivate? At the end of the day, does your plan motivate? If it does, then you're on the right track. If it's not, which is by and large what we hear all the time, oh, or, or oh, my technicians don't want to make money. Oh, we've got millennials, they don't care about making money. Not true. <laughs> Carmen happens to be a millennial, but <laughs> but not true, right? I mean, people, people want to be uh, paid for what they feel they're worth, and that's a conversation that's worth having, but also you got to reevaluate your compensation plans. Now might be a great time to do that. So overall, something else that you can do in your department to kind of take an inventory of everybody and um, exclusive of, you know, fixing the change that's happening, you can ask if there was one thing that would make your job more productive, enjoyable, what would it be? Take an inventory of the health of your entire department. What do my advisors need? What do my technicians need? What does my parts department need? Um, you know, what do my cashier warranty clerk? It's a good time to do all those things. So um, we've got till 345. I want to keep us on time and my clock shows 334. We're here to help any way we can. We do have a lot of resources on our website. You can reach out to any of our employees at any time. Um, you can reach me and I can forward it to them at kwilliams at dealerprotraining.com. Our website is on here, our phone number. And, um, you know, please just reach out to us if, if there's anything we, we do. Like I said, we do talk to so many people. We try to share their best practices and ideas as best we can. So now that's what I want to do is open this up to everybody on the call. If you've got something unique going on in your market or if you've done something unique that's been really great right now to um, you know help your employees help your customers I'll just kind of open it up and and go from there and I know we've got some of our other trainers on the call too so if any of you have learned of recently some things that your dealers are are doing or going through um, by all means hop on and and share we will do this again at 3 p.m. next week. Stay tuned for the topic. And if you've got anything you want to um, uh, talk about, let me know that as well. Hey, Kristen, it's uh, Steve here. The, um, just had a, uh, a commentary on, uh, we deal with a lot of the uh, chemical companies and we were just looking at all the results on uh, this past week from a plus for, uh, just over 200 some odd dealers and what their activity was on the menu presentations. And we were actually pretty surprised that it's about even from where it's been uh, for the last few weeks, it hadn't gone down at all. And in fact, with some of the dealers, we saw that it actually jumped up and in, in tracking it down, the biggest difference on those dealers was that they were doing more of a pre-appointment preparation on appointment customers, right? So rather than waiting, you know, until the customer came in and trying to get a menu presentation, what we were seeing, a lot of the commentary was that there is a shift 
towards customers not coming into the dealership, right? So people, you know, making appointments or dropping off the vehicle, or I think as Carmen said earlier, you know, going out and picking up the vehicle and bringing it back in. So not as much opportunity for that face-to-face -face contact. So some of these dealers were being a lot more proactive in making sure that their advisors were, well, you mentioned, you know, looking up in advance, making sure that there aren't any open recalls, right? that, that there any other maintenance services over and above what the customer was requesting, that they're uh, making sure the customer's aware of that uh, at the point that they're making the appointment or before they're actually uh, bringing the vehicle in. And, you know, sort of the big hidden advantage there now, very, you know, very few people were waiting or a lot less people waiting for the vehicle. So, yeah. uh, you know, a, a big opportunity there since the car is going to be dropped off anyways and there for the day anyways, uh, picking up some of those past due services or things that it may have been deferred in the past. So, uh, and the other sort of big point and it came from our California guys this morning is that, you know, California announced that they were, you know, this is like the tightest lockdown, uh, you know, in the United States compared, and then New York jumped on the same sort of a, an approach, mm -hmm. but dealer service departments are, are open. <laughs> They're deemed to be essential services. So, right. so actually, you know, that's a, that's a big break uh, for the car dealerships. The other side of it that, you know, the big comment I was getting all week long from managers was that, you know, the general manager and the owner and all of that that have been sort of leaving them alone for their, you know, for a long time. And, you know, they just sort of get through their monthly meetings. Uh, they're like, hey, you know, it's up to you now, right? Because, you know, sales have really dropped off. But the service department side of it from what we've seen so far right now, you know, touch wood and all the above, but um, actually is in you know, you wouldn't know. Uh, even the chemical guys are saying that their own sales are about what they've been and not, haven't really seen any downturn at this point. So anyway, I just thought I'd uh, pass it over to that yeah, comment. Great, great info. Anybody else out there that's that would share with us what you're experiencing in your store right now and where you're located and what kind of franchise you've got? No takers. Hey, Chris, and this is Chris. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Doing good. Hey, I'm here with uh, Dylan Cox. The, he didn't want to talk on the call, but he's a BDC. <laughs> he's a BDC person here, uh -huh. and actually, just since Wednesday, since I've been here, he saved. We we've been tracking at six customers by because they were going to cancel and uh, doing the VIP pickup delivery. And they have a little sheet they send with the and tell the customer that not only we will we, we'll, you don't have to meet with us, we'll do everything over the phone via internet, email, and then uh, they just they let them know they're disinfecting the car upon return, and they don't have to even see the driver. So it's actually working out pretty good. Great, and you're you're in Illinois, right? Yeah, Springfield, Illinois. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Are they doing? Um... Anything else like the pickup and delivery for customers or anything like that? Yeah, that's what that's what they're doing. They're uh, they're using the hourly technicians, porters. They're even using the uh, the girls upstairs in the county. As the owner said, don't hire any other drivers. Let's utilize the staff that we have that's sitting around. Yeah. So that's what they're, that's what they're doing. Receptionist, everybody, anybody, in any, uh, if you're not working on a car or an advisor, you're available to go pick up a car. So that's that's their motto. Okay. What about from a disinfection standpoint? What are they? See, have you seen anything from their technicians that they're doing with the vehicles? Oh yeah, they're all, everybody here. Even the advisors, orders. Everybody's got gloves on. They've uh, stationed disinfectants everywhere. There's letters posted. They, you know, we, we take pride in our work and cleanliness and taking care of our clients. And uh, I mean, everybody's everybody's protected. Good. Okay. It's working out really good here. I mean, they have slowed down some, but they're mainly, uh, it, it's, they, they dropped a little bit. They're about to have a record-breaking month. It's still pacing pretty decent. But uh, they, I told them they just got to stay on, on it and keep the outbound phone calls going and pick it up and delivering in order to maintain, especially up here in Illinois. The governor here is looking at a, uh, a lockdown like California. So we got to make sure that they're getting their cars in and out of here. 
Yeah. Okay. I don't know if anybody wants to talk about the parts. Um, if you read Automotive News this week, talking about the parts shortages that will also possibly affect customer service, um, you know, coming up and uh, how that's going to impact getting vehicles back to the customers in a timely fashion. Bill or Carmen, you have any insight on that that you want to share? I do not have any insight myself, Kristen. Okay. According to their article, before the virus hit, unavailable parts accounted for about 20% of delayed service repairs. Um, and, uh, you know, based on franchise, they've got all the rankings in here of kind of where people stood with CSI. I didn't know if we had any parts managers on the call. I know there were a couple that were registered. But um, if, that's, if that's an area that you want to tackle um, or talk a little bit more about. Okay. Anybody else have anything to contribute? I know um, next week at 3 p.m. Eastern, we'll have this again. And right now, we're scheduled to do four of these. Uh, as we continue to get more information from our trainers when they're, because we're continuing to train as long as the store is having us uh, come in, we're moving forward and um, it's a great time for training and it's an even better time to, for dealers, as, as somebody mentioned earlier, to focus on fixed ops as, uh, you know, sales potentially will decline. But we believe fixed ops should always be a heavy focus. It's 50% of the dealership's profits and um, it, it should uh it should have the amount of effort, resources, time, and attention devoted to it that reflects that. So I'll just pause here one more time if anybody's got anything to contribute. Okay, well, we thank you for joining us. Um, we hope you um, join us next week at three o'clock. Look for an email. Please check your spam folder if you don't see it. I'll send this out to you. Several of you asked me if, if we were recording and would send it, and so you'll have it. If there's any resources in there that you have questions about, um, just go ahead and email me back. All right, thanks so much. Have a great day and a great weekend. Bye, everybody.